In this video, we're going to talk about how to categorize transactions in QuickBooks Online, more specific expense transactions. So what would trigger you to enter an expense transaction in QuickBooks Online could be multiple things. One, maybe you have the receipt right in front of you and you want to start doing the bookkeeping or accounting for this specific expense. Uh, two, maybe you have an actual bank statement in front of you and you want to enter a whole bunch of transactions for that given month. Or three, maybe you connected QuickBooks Online and I have an entirely different video talking about how to connect QuickBooks Online to your bank. But you connected QuickBooks Online to your bank and all those transactions were downloaded and now it's time to categorize them. So all three ways would be different and we're gonna do um, each one step by step. So for example, let's say I have the receipt right in front of me and I wanna go into QuickBooks and enter that one transaction. So I'm gonna click on the new button on the left navigation bar and then I'm gonna click on expense. After I click on expense, I have to choose which bank account or credit card I use to make that expenditure. Typically that information will be on the receipt. So I'm gonna look at the receipt. I noticed it was a debit card transaction. So I'm simply gonna pick my bank account to enter that transaction from. I'm gonna read from the receipt when the transaction was made. Let's say it was January 2nd, 2024. And then under category, this is the categorization part, I am gonna categorize this. So let's say I went to Best Buy and I bought some, some cables for the office. So under category, I have to now pick the right account that, uh, that matches what I bought. So I bought some cables for the office. I have to click on the drop down menu and I have to look at all the different options you have in here. Now the options that you have in here for categorization is actually your chart of accounts. I'm gonna do a completely separate video of breaking down how to set up a chart of accounts, what all those accounts mean. And you are gonna learn in that video how to get intimately, uh, how to be intimately aware of every account that's in your chart of accounts. Because if you don't know your chart of accounts, you're gonna have a very tough time categorizing and knowing what to do in your general accounting system. But let's say for example, I have a category called office supplies or office expenses. I'm actually going to see if I have anything like that. I have office equipment. Okay, let's say that's the best option that I have. I will click on office equipment. On the description, I can put uh, cables for the office and then the amount, let's say we spend $97.63. And that's it, that's all you, all you need to do at this point. You do have the option to come down here under attachments. You can take a picture of this or scan it and then upload it into your system simply by clicking dragging and dropping uh, the image in your computer and then it comes up and it becomes an attachment. It's, it's a manual attachment into that transaction, but that's an option. Like you don't have to do that, but that's a really great option. So that's it. That's really all you need to do uh, to categorize it. One key question that people ask me is, Hector, what if the category that I'm looking for, let's say I wanted to call it supplies, it's not in here and I go type uh, supplies and okay, uh, supplies is here. But let's say for example, I wanted something called office supplies and it's not there. You can actually create categories on the spot. So all you have to do is click on the drop down menu, click on add new. And then uh, once you click on add new, you should get a pop-up or a drawer on the right hand side asking you uh, what type of account this is. Since we're talking about expenses, we'll click on the drop down menu and pick expenses as one of the categories. Now this, is, this part gets tricky. This is where maybe an accountant can help you figure out what's supposed to be the account type and what's supposed to be the detail type. Typically you wanna search for, again, the closest thing to what you're looking for. So this one called supplies and materials, for example. And then under name, I give it my own custom name. So this is office supplies. And again, we'll have a different video, check the description that talks about chart of accounts in depth. So I click on save and close, and then I can essentially create my own categories. Now. Keep in mind that if you create too many categories, your profit and loss report will be very difficult to read. It might be multiple pages. It might actually be counterintuitive or counterproductive to have too many accounts. But again, you do need the categories um, that actually pertain to your business. So that's, it's, it just becomes a fine line. So anyway, I'll click save and close. And that's you know categorize, entering one transaction, categorizing one transaction. Let's say that in this particular case, I don't have just one transaction in a receipt. I actually have a bank statement or a credit card statement in front of me. And I wanna enter a whole bunch of transactions in one shot. Then I'm gonna use the register instead. So I'm gonna go in, back into QuickBooks. I'm gonna click on the gear menu 
on the top right and then I'm going to click on chart of accounts and then I'm going to pick the actual bank account or credit card account from which that bank statement um, matches to and then I'm going to go inside the register and that's going to send you into a screen that's going to show you all the transactions you have ever created for that bank register or credit card register and you can actually create the transactions in here and it's a much faster data entry process so i'm going to click on add expense and then notice it's almost like a grid like a like a like a spreadsheet and then i'm going to come in here and read the information from here so let's say i'll pick one at random this one that says aria hotel las vegas i'm going to go ahead and create that vendor in quickbooks so i'll type here aria hotel las vegas Okay, just like I created you know, Best Buy earlier. Then I'm gonna click on Add and then click on uh, Vendor and Save. That creates that vendor. And then I'm gonna put the dollar amount. Let me go back and see what that was. That was $1,000. So I put here $1,000. And then on the memo, I could put what I did. So uh, went to the accounting conference or whatever, right? So this is just internal notes. And then this is the category part or the account part where you pick how to, how do you categorize that specific transaction so let's say that's going to be travel we'll pick travel there and then click on save so that creates that one transaction and then it basically uh in the in the, the next line it prompts me it keeps that line open so i can go to the next one so let's say i'm going to pick the next one this one here called verizon wireless to 87.40 so i come in here hit tab tab type verizon wireless and then I hit tab and I always like to create vendors. That's that's a key thing. On the memo, I don't need to put what it is. That's pretty self-explanatory. Then I put 287.40 and then I hit tab and then under account, let's say I know this is called a uh, telephone. So I pick my category in there and I categorize this expense. I wasn't paying attention to the date I should have. So let's say this is the 20th. So I'm gonna come in here and put uh, 0120 and then hit tab and that should enter that in there make sure you got the year right so if that was 2023 make sure you put 2023 and not 2024 or whatever it is and then we click on save and you would do that through your entire um uh bank statement you, you would enter the deposits typically as income or match them to a uh, an invoice you would put all your debit card expenses all your electronic withdrawals all your transfers all your checks paid for example check paid would be similar so let's say for example we have this check i wrote to carlos gomez for a thousand dollars and um so i could come in here and check the date again so this was uh 12 30 22 so i come in here and put 12 30 2022 20, actually um i should actually put check instead of expense so that's a, a different transaction type so 12 30 2022 20, and i put the check number so let's say this is check number what was the check number here i don't, I don't see it so this is uh, check number 1150 so i'm going to come in here put 1150 and then this is carlos gomez whoops let me delete that let me put carlos gomez so we'll create that vendor there click on add add it as a vendor click on save and let's say on the memo i could put uh worked on the Marvin house or something like that so it's, a, it's a contractor that worked in one of our clients house and then this dollar amount was a thousand dollars so under payment I put one thousand dollars and then I'm gonna put here contractor or subcontractor or something like that do I have subcontractor I don't so I would just create the account go to add new and then select the category let's do um, instead of expenses cost of goods sold which is another type of category and then we do cost of labor and then we'll put here uh contractors contractors or subcontractors click save and close so i'm creating the categories as well on the fly um, as i pick or categorize the transaction then i click on save and essentially you would be entering expenses and checks either from the register or by going into new expense or new check so that's typical ways to do that now let's say I have one of my banks or credit cards connected into QuickBooks and all the transactions are being downloaded into what's called bank feed. Now let's say I'm going to click on the here on the register. I'm going to go find this credit card, this Chase Visa 37, I mean 3271. I don't have any transactions here. And of course it's going to take forever if I enter them manually. But if I have them connect, connected from the bank, 
I should be able to load things here super quickly by using uh, the bank feed or the transactions, the bank transactions section. So we're going to click on transactions, bank transactions, and then I already have connected this uh, account to my QuickBooks. All the transactions are basically loaded in here. And again, I have a, a different video that talks about how to connect the banks and how to upload uh, transactions if you have like a, like a spreadsheet or something like that. That would look like this. So you could have a CSV file that you downloaded from the bank that contains all the transactions. Again, in, the, in that video, check out the description for that. I explain how to upload uh, Excel CSV files into QuickBooks if you cannot do a direct connection. But at this point, I've already connected the banks and I already have 152 transactions sort of pending for review so I can load them into the register in a super quick way. Or, so once they're loaded, then all you have to do is start categorizing them. So one of the things I like to do is I like to group them by the particular payee. So I'm gonna click on the, on the gear menu and then click on turn on grouping. And I also wanna add that there's going to be a different video that focuses on all these moving parts inside banking. I'm just gonna show you some of the sort of like high level stuff. So I'm gonna turn on grouping and then I'm gonna click on description. And then essentially all these transactions are now gonna start getting naturally grouped into uh, the same type of payee that should make it much easier to categorize. Then I'm gonna click, click on the gear menu here and then I'm gonna click on show bank details because I actually want the original information that came from the bank. If I don't click on show bank details, then QuickBooks is gonna clean it up for me and sometimes it doesn't do a really good job at that. And sometimes it even does a really bad job at suggesting categories. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose show bank details um, and I kind of that's kind of what I want. I want the, the original bank information to, to be shown here. Uh, then I'm gonna start creating uh, the vendors for some of these uh, transactions and categorizing them. So I'll collapse the left navigation bar and let me expand this a little bit more so we have more real estate. And let's say this one uh, called Anthony's, I can actually create the vendor from here. I can click on the drop down menu, click on add new, and then I, I just type Anthony's uh, Pizza, whatever it is, if I happen to know the whole name, then click on save. So I create the vendor and then under account, it's suggesting inventory asset. <laughs> That's completely wrong, of course. So I'm gonna put here uh, meals or business meals, something like that. There's this account called Meals and Entertainment. It should really be called business meals. So you have to work in your chart of accounts to give it the right names. And that's it, that's how you would categorize this one transaction. Then I would click on add. And then what's cool about bank feeds is that when it sees another transaction that's very similar, it automatically add the payee for you and automatically suggested the same exact category. So that allows you to do you know, save it really quick and do it on the fly. Now this pop-up is asking about bank rules. For now, I'm gonna X out of that because we'll have an entirely different video talking about bank rules. But you can also um, categorize things in batch. So for example, I'm gonna com come down here and do, do these three chevrons that I'm here. So I'm gonna select all the chevrons in one shot. I'm gonna click on edit. Then under vendor or customer, I'll create a chevron here. And notice that I always create the vendor. I always create the payee. It's good for reports. And then under the category, I'm gonna go into auto expenses and uh, see if I have, uh, maybe I don't like that one. Let's see something that says gas or, there you go, gas. So we have a category called gas under current truck expense gas. So I'm gonna click on um, apply and accept and it categorizes all those three in one shot. For now, I'm gonna X out of this rules pop-up and actually, I'm gonna click on the gear menu again and uh, remove show suggested rules just because I don't want that pop-up to show up, so show up each time. We'll have a different video talking about bank rules because that's really fun and complex at the same time. So these three Chick-fil-A, I could do the same thing. I can select the three, uh, the three individual transactions or click on the checkbox for the grouping, click on edit, and then come in here and put uh, Chick-fil-A to add new and let's say this is going to be uh, meals and then I can I'm going to click on apply just to show you apply and then all these transactions got categorized in one shot so basically this is like a preview mode and then I can manually add any of these manually or select the whole group and click on accept so you see all the multiple moving parts there okay let's go let's check out this one called GoDaddy so I'm going to select all the GoDaddy click on edit and then 
create the vendor, go daddy, save, and then let's say this is gonna be uh, dues and subscriptions or something like that. Dues and subscriptions, there we go. Apply and accept. So once you download them through banking, you see how it's much, much easier, much faster, uh, because well, one, QuickBook suggests some things, and sometimes it's kind of right. Like for example, this Hollywood Beach Garage, it, it uh, suggested automobiles and truck. Close, <laughs> not there, but not close, but this is parking. And what you also notice is that sometimes, it doesn't happen all the time, QuickBooks will give you a little link to quickly add the vendor with a single click. So sometimes you get that ability, but the, this one should be a parking or something like that. So we don't have a parking. We did have car and truck expense. Let's see what we have under car and truck. Let's just do car here. So we have car slash truck expense. And under that we have car lease, gas, mileage, repairs and maintenance, insurance, auto. I guess we can create a new one. So let's create an expense category. And we're gonna put this under auto and we're gonna call this a uh, parking, but we're gonna make it a sub account or a sub category and we'll put that under car slash truck. Again, the video that we'll do on chart of accounts will go more into detail on this whole structure of sub accounts and that sort of thing. So click on um, save and close, and then I have my car and truck parking category, and then on the next time I have any sort of parking, I would, um, I would categorize that there. And, and that's how you would do it. You would just go in here and, and categorize each of these um, transactions and put them where you're supposed to put them in the chart of accounts. One of the um, typical things that people ask me is, what about personal expenses? Like how do I categorize those? And there should always be an account in your QuickBooks uh, that should be for the owner's equity or shareholder distribution or shareholder loan, something like that. And you gotta put, put it in that category. So let's say all these publics are personal expenses. So I'm gonna go, go to edit, I'm gonna create the vendor. Again, always create the vendor. Go to add new, click on save. And let's say we have anything called shareholder. No, let's see distributions. No, let's see uh, equity, sometimes equity. Okay, so we have an account called Deborah Woods Draws. Let's say, let's say Deborah Woods is the owner of the company. So the word equity, draws, distributions, even the word personal expenses, dividends, owners, 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 um, uh, capital, all those things should be the equity, equity category, which basically means the owner is taking money from the business for personal gain. That's how you categorize personal transactions more or less. So we'll click on apply. Notice that all these personal transactions are going to Deborah Woods equity account. And then I click on accept. And that's it in a nutshell. That's how you categorize uh, either receipts or uh, from a bank statement into the register or using bank feeds. Again, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and definitely go in the description section so you can see all the videos I've created for QuickBooks Online that will help you have the most pleasant experience doing your own accounting and using QuickBooks. Thank you very much and I'll see you on the next one.